Welcome students. Welcome to Industrial Fluid Power class. This class we are going to see about components of hydraulic systems. So under this components of hydraulic systems we are going to see the direction control valves. So direction control valves can be classified in a number of ways. So according to type of construction it can be classified as poppet valves, spool valves. According to number of working ports it can be classified as two way valves three way valves and four way valves so according to number of switching position it can be classified into two position and three position so direction control valve a direction control valve controls the direction of the fluid in the hydraulic system pass through the device redirects or stops the fluid flow with the help of internal mechanism in the valve valves contains ports that are external openings for fluid to enter and leave via connecting pipelines the number of ports on a direction control valve is usually identified by the term way now let's see the poppet valves directional poppet valves consists of a housing board in which one or more suitably formed seating elements that is movable element in the form of balls or cones are situated so this is the symbol uh, this is the diagram of illustration of poppet valves here you are having a movement element movable elements either it may be in the form of balls or may be in the form of cones it is sitting on the element with the help of spring when the operating pressure increases the valve becomes more tightly seated in this design okay this is the inlet port so when the uh, valve is when the flow is having a more pressure so it will tightly this valve is tightly set so that so that it will not allow okay so this is the symbol for direction control valve in this direction it is a free flow and this direction no flow so it is a unidirectional flow poppet valves the main advantage of poppet valves are no leakage as it provides absolute sealing long useful life as there are no leakage of oil flows may be used with even the highest pressures as no hydraulic sticking that is pressure dependent deformation and leakages occurs in the valve even though they are having advantages they having some disadvantages of these valves are large pressure losses due to short strokes pressure collapse during switching phase due to negative overlap that is connection of pump actuator and tank at the same time so during at, connecting at the same all at the same time pressure may collapse spool type valve so spool type valves are commonly used as they can be transferred to two three or more routing fluid locations between various inlet and outlet ports combinations these are commonly used for steering control of actuators because a single valve can produce extension retraction and neutrality there are four variants of spool type valve 2 by 2 valves 3 by 2 valves 4 by 2 valves and 4 by 3 valves so this two mentioning the ports and this two mentioning the ways position so it means two ports two position three ports two position four ports two position and four ports three position so two by two way valves so it is also considered as a two way valves also called as two way valves so two way valves are also simple two positions on or off valves but actuated by actuators such as solenoid actuators hydraulic actuators etc so this 2 by 2 valve means two ports having two position one position is on position and other position is off position so this is a simple illustration of the 2 by 2 valves it is uh, it having a spring uh, contraction having a push button here okay so normally open position when the piston is normally open so the fluid from port a it goes to 
port p our fluid from port b it goes to port a so this is normally open so this this is the position a now it goes in the position a from here to here so here second position is closed position that is off position when push button is pressed the button is close the port p so that no fluid flows to flows from port p to port a so this is the position b this is the on position so when the push button is relaxed fluid from port b it goes to port a when the push button is pressed so it close the port p so that no fluid goes to port a so next three by three wave valves are uh, it may be called as 3 by 2 3 by 2 valves a directional control valve primary function is alternatively to pressurize and exhaust one working port is called three way valve this is a direction control valve and its primary function is alternatively to pressurize and exhaust one working port okay so generally these valves are used to operate single acting cylinders three way directional valves are available for manual mechanical pilot solenoid actuation solenoid actuation so these valves may be two position or three position okay most commonly they have only two position but in some cases a neutral position may be needed these valves are normally closed valves that is the pump port is blocked when the valve is not operating the three way valve ports are inlet from the pump ports are inlet from the pump working ports and exhaust to the tank three ports are generally identify as follows what are the three ports p it's represent the pressure or the pump port a or b it is a working port and t it is a tank port that is a return to tank so now consider this port port p port a and port t first normally open condition so having a three ports and two position one position is normally open and another is closed no flow either no flow or cross flow so first position when the piston is uh, piston is uh, in normal position when the piston is in normal position so this spring is uh, expanded so that it close the port t so that it the uh, fluid from port t it goes to port a okay port a means it goes to the uh, act, it, from port a it goes to actuate at the cylinder and in the not so it got the, from p the symbol is like this this side spring actuated this is a button so from port p to a here port t no flow and when the button is pressed so that this this pull close the port p so this is so this uh, in this position the fluid from port a it returns to port t so when the spool push button is pressed so that it uh, presses the cylinder also uh, this way, inside spool also okay so that what happen it will press that so the return oil from port a it goes to port t so this is in the position 2 now this position 2 there is no flow for port p and port and there is a flow between port a to port Okay. and this is a normal closed position so in this position when initially port p is closed so return oil from port a to port t and in second uh, second position this port t is closed so that uh, fluid from port p to port a Directional control valves are used to stop, start, route and divert fluid streams without affecting the pressure level or the flow rate of the system. Directional control valves are identified by the number of ways that fluid can flow and the number of positions the valve can produce. A way refers to the number of active porting connections called ports. This valve has 3 ports, so it is a three-way valve. The term position refers to the number of discrete operating positions of the internal valve element. For this spool valve, one position allows fluid to flow from the inlet to port A and a second position allows fluid to flow from the inlet to port B. 
Therefore, this is a two-position valve. This spool valve has two ports and two positions. The first position allows fluid to flow freely. The second position blocks both ports. Even though both ports aren't physically blocked, the lack of fluid entering the pressure port also prevents fluid from exiting outlet port A. Therefore, both ports are defined as blocked, making it a two-way, two-position valve. To simplify fluid system drawings and schematics, all valves can be represented graphically. Boxes, sometimes called envelopes, are used to indicate the number of valve positions. Since this is a two-position valve, its graphic representation has two adjacent boxes. Continuous lines are used to indicate fluid flow between ports. For complex valves, the ports may also be labeled. The input port is typically labeled P for pressure. Outlet ports are typically given alpha characters starting with A. Other times, the letter stands for the destination of the fluid. For instance, the letter T would indicate a port that is connected to a tank. This is a fairly simple valve, so port labels are not required. A solid arrow indicates the direction of liquid flow. The first position of this valve allows fluid to flow from the pressure port to port A, so an arrow is drawn in the first box to indicate fluid flow. A T indicates that a port, or way, is blocked or closed. This valve's first position has no ports blocked, but its second position blocks both. The second box corresponds to the second position of the valve. Therefore, two T's are added to illustrate the lack of fluid flow in the second position. Next, lines are drawn to indicate the normal position of the valve. The normal position is defined as the position of the valve when its spool is unshifted and the power is off. This means that any mechanical actuators, such as springs, are in their non-actuated positions. Electrical actuators, such as solenoids, are powered off. The normal position can sometimes be referred to as the unshifted, de-energized, or unactuated position. In this case, position 1 is the normal position. Therefore, the lines to indicate the normal position are drawn in the first box. On a hydraulic schematic, the lines that indicate the normal position will be connected to other devices in the system. Valves that do not have mechanical or electrical actuators do not have a normal position because they must be manually moved. When shifted, they remain in that state until manually shifted to another position. The terms normally opened and normally closed are used to describe the condition of a valve when it is in the normal position. For this valve, the normal position is position 1 which allows unrestricted fluid flow through the open ports. Therefore, this valve is a normally opened valve. Additionally, this valve is a spring return valve, meaning that after it is actuated, a spring returns the spool to the normal position. A spring symbol is placed next to the block representing the normal position. Actuators used to change valve positions can be mechanical, pneumatic pilot, or electric solenoid. To complete the diagram, the primary actuator symbol is placed on the other end of the graphic symbol. In this case, the actuator is a push button. Mechanical actuators change valve positions with springs, push buttons, plungers, levers, and cam rollers. Pneumatic pilots change valve position with a pressured air signal. Electric solenoids that change valve positions by directly moving the valve element are called direct solenoids. Electric solenoids that open small pilot valves and allow pressurized air to move the valve element are called solenoid-controlled pilot operators. Here is a similar valve to the one previously shown. It has two ports and two positions. So it is also a two-way, two-position valve. To illustrate the differences with this valve, let's build its graphic symbol. It is a two-position valve, so the graphic symbol will have two adjacent boxes. 
This valve also has two ports. However, in the normal non-actuated position, both ports are blocked. Therefore, it is a normally closed valve. When the valve is actuated, fluid is allowed to flow from the pressure port to port A. A spring returns the valve to its normally closed position and a push button actuates it to the open position. Therefore, this valve is a two-way, two-position, normally closed, spring return, push button operated valve. While it is similar to the previous example, the differences in the normal position make it a distinctly different valve. The most important applications in fluid power for three-way valves are for directional control. Here we have a typical three-way valve with two operating positions. This valve has an inlet port P, exhaust port E, and output port A. In its normal position, inlet port P is blocked and outlet port A is connected to exhaust port E. The second position allows fluid to flow from the pressure port P to outlet port A and blocks exhaust port E. The valve is also spring return and push button operated. Here is another three-way, two-position valve. This valve also has an inlet port P, exhaust port E, and output port A, but they are in a different configuration. In its normal position, exhaust port E is blocked and fluid flows from pressure port P to outlet port A. The second position, pressure port P, is blocked and allows fluid to flow from outlet port A to exhaust port E. The valve is also spring return and push button operated. Three-way directional control valves have many applications in fluid systems. One of the most common applications is for the control of single acting cylinders. In this application, fluid is pumped from a tank to pressure port P. With the valve in the normal position, fluid is blocked. When the valve is actuated, fluid flows from pressure port P through outlet port A to the cylinder. The cylinder extends and remains extended until the valve changes positions. When the valve de-energizes, the spool returns to position 1, pressure port P is blocked and exhaust port E is opened. The cylinder retracts and fluid flows from the cylinder through port A and out exhaust port E. From there, the fluid returns to the tank. Here's a graphical rendering of the same system using symbols as they would appear on a schematic diagram. Two- and three-way control valves are ideal for use as directional control valves to operate cylinders or hydraulic rams, filling and draining tanks, as mechanical brakes, and even in vacuum systems. Their versatility is vital to the successful operation of many different fluid systems. Directional control valves are used to stop
now let's see four way to dc dc valves so this four way two position valve has two working position when the valve position is a then a then pressure port p is connected with port b and a port is connected with port t for this position fluid flow will go to po, go to p to b and then fluid flow will go will return from a to t port suppose you want to clamp a cylinder with this valve and the and the place where no need to change the direction continuously there we can be use this type of valve when you want to unclamp the actuator then just actuate the valve coil or press the push button for unclamping when the valve position is b then pressure port p is connected with a and b port is connected with t port for this position fluid flow will go to p to a and fluid flow will return from port b to t port for this position actuator will be unclamped let's see this this is the initial position this is the a position so in this position this is a sliding pull it's a push button sliding spool so in this position the fluid is flowing from port p to a and port b to r okay it means this is in the first position so fluid flows from port p to a and port b to r and let's see the second position and in this position when the push button is pushed so that the spool will move inside so that the oil will flow from and the return oil from the a it flows from through this bypass way and directly go to the r and from port p it goes to b so it means from a the oil will return to the return tank and from port p it goes to the b port b so this is the four way, four ports and two positions one position is a direct position and other position is a cross position so what are the four ports a b and p r p is the pressure port r is the return tank and a and b are the uh, actuators two ports now let's see the 4 by 3 4 by 3 dc valves it means four ports three position dc valves so there is three working position in four way three position direction control valve this valve is using to move the actuator in forward and reverse when the spool in center position then port p is blocked that means fluid flow is stopped so here you having a direct position uh, forward motion and reverse motion and one is a flow stop motion that is a hold position if spool moves to right side then a port will be connected with p port and b port will be connected with t port if it happens cylinder will move forward and when the spool moves to the left then p port will be connected with b port and a port will be connected with t port if it happens the cylinder will move reverse the diagram above is a closed central center direction valve diagram okay so now in this position the initial position the port p and a are connected and port b and r are connected so through port p the fluid flows to a and through port b the fluid flows to the return tank r so now we are in the first position it means from port p to a and from b to r you can see the flow so now the second position now when the slide when the spool slide is moved to the left so that the port a is closed okay and p is closed b is closed and r is totally closed so this is the third position no fluid flows all the four ports are closed okay so this is the third position that is a center position okay a b t r everything is closed nothing moment so let's go into see a one uh, animation uh, regarding this direction control valve 
Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com, and today we're going to be having a look at directional control valves. This will be part one of two on directional control valve basics. We will be looking at four port directional control valves that feature a blocked P port when in the center or neutral position. Four port directional control valves typically have the four labels P, T, A, and B. The P port is for supply from the pump, the T port is for the return to tank or reservoir, and the A and B ports are typically known as the work ports and are connected to the cylinder. Let's get started with a four port two position valve that does not have a center position. On the symbol, you see P to A porting to extend the cylinder and P to B porting to retract the cylinder. On the actual valve spool, you will see a cylindrical spool sliding inside of a cylindrical valve bore. The spool has large diameter areas called lands and smaller diameter areas called undercuts. This valve, with its four ports and two positions, is popular enough to extend and retract a cylinder, but does not allow the user to stop the cylinder mid-stroke. The spring inside this particular valve returns the valve spool to the P to A position whenever the lever is released. Notice that the relief valve is taking care of limiting maximum system pressure whenever the cylinder is deadheaded against the fully extended or fully retracted position. Now let's change to a four port three position valve. In the symbol, you can see that a center position has been added along with a second spring. The two springs in the symbol mean that the valve is spring centered. Notice that the P port is blocked when in the center position. The relief valve is limiting system pressure. The A, B and T ports are also blocked, making this a closed center valve. The machining of the valve spool shows that lands are blocking the A and B ports. The P port comes into an undercut on the spool, but flow cannot move to any other port, so therefore the P port is blocked. The T port is available on both sides of the valve spool, but again is not connected to any other port at this time, so it is blocked. Activating the valve shows us that we can provide P to A flow to extend the cylinder or P to B flow to retract the cylinder. Releasing the handle shows that we can in fact stop the cylinder mid-stroke. This is a common feature and is desired for many hydraulic systems. It is especially popular for horizontal cylinder installations, but as we will soon find out, it is not great for a vertical installation. In this animation, the valve seems to perform just fine, but can you imagine what happens as the cylindrical valve spool moves back and forth many thousands of times through the same valve bore? That's right, wear will start to occur and internal valve leakage will develop and we will find that our cylinder is slowly drifting downward whenever the valve handle is in neutral. Now let's look at a valve that is typically referred to as a float center valve. Just as before, the P port is blocked at center position. However, the A, B and T ports are all now connected together. Notice that the lands on the spool have been machined back to allow the B port and the A port to connect to tank during the center position. If you are watching the cylinder, you will notice that it fell all the way to the bottom. The float center literally leaves the cylinder floating freely. Believe it or not, this valve center is quite popular for vertical cylinder applications, but we need to add pilot operated check valves in order to hold the cylinder mid stroke. The small diameter pilot lines are not continuous flow lines. They merely provide a tiny fixed amount of fluid and the pressure needed to operate the pilot piston. When the pilot piston is extended, it allows reverse flow through the check valve. Ball and seat style or poppet and seat style check valves are usually considered a much more reliable leak free valve as the main components of such a valve do not wear against each other. The float center valve in this case 
is most desirable to make sure that the pilot lines are completely vented to tank to allow the springs inside the check valves to close the check valves completely and hold the cylinder mid-stroke. In both of the four-port, three-position directional control valves that we studied, the closed center and the float center, the P-port was blocked. The use of these valves is typical to what is referred to as a closed center hydraulic system. In many cases, our gear pump would be replaced by a pressure compensated variable displacement pump in order to avoid excessive pumping over the relief valve. In another video, we will cover the tandem center valve and the open center directional control valve. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. Thank you students. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next class.